Hello everyone, get ready with me for school while I talk about Powerless because I just finished it and that book is so good. I need to talk about it. I need to tell somebody about it. The next book doesn't come out until July and I'm like flipping out because I'm like, I need to know what happens like ASAP. I need to know right now, but we'll have to wait. And in the meantime, I know that the novella is coming out this week and I will be reading it. I know that Kai and Peyton are not in it and this is like all about Adina, but like I need something. I need something. I'm putting so much concealer on my face, but you know what? I'm breaking out, so I kind of need all this. When I first started the book, I will not lie, I was all like, I don't know about this dialogue, because at times I was like, it's a little bit predictable, a little bit, I wouldn't say cringy, but it was just predictable, okay? And I was all like, ooh, is the whole book going to be like this? Like, I don't know if I can handle that. Because maybe it's not as good as everyone says. The dialogue just like blatantly said, it's like, oh my gosh, brother, we're sparring. I'm having so much fun. And I'm like, oh, well... You could have just thought that in your brain saying oh my gosh, that's my brother and he's the prince, you know, but like I don't know like they just said it in dialogue and I was like Hmm, I don't know how I feel about that choice But um, I was like i'm not a writer. Okay, i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna stick it through I'm gonna read this book because everyone loves it and i'm sure that I will love it too I think it was more just like setting up like exposition wise or something because I didn't really find that problem to happen Like throughout the book as I was reading it. I was just like, oh Maybe that could have been said internal monologue in your brain instead of like chosen as actual dialogue to say for the characters but i didn't really find that again in the book i was just kind of like you know what that's chill that's fine i saw it in the beginning but i was like i can look past that i'm cool with it you know i also want to preface this by saying i read books for fun for the like imaginative world and so i can like escape my world into another i don't read them because i'm looking for something super profound and like the best book on planet earth okay some people have different tastes and that's okay this is my taste i ate this up okay that's the truth i'm like so out of concealer and i bought another one but i'm like no i'm gonna use every last drop of this and i am going to get there i didn't really know what to expect going into the book either because i was just like okay i know that like it's forbidden love kind of or like enemies to lovers but like i didn't like read up on anything about it and it was fantasy and i'd only read six of crows and like fourth wing iron flame like those two and i was just like okay i don't really know what this is about but I'm, we're gonna dive right in and i'm so glad i did because it was amazing bro it was magic literally and figuratively it was magic it just had the big three for me it had hunger games vibes obviously it had divergent vibes which don't quote me on this, but I think is the blueprint. A lot of books nowadays are being like, whenever people like recommend books, they're like, oh, this has divergent vibes plus blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, y'all weren't there. Y'all were not there. I was there. I know. So in my mind, I'm like, ooh, if it has divergent vibes, I'm absolutely going to love it. But it also had like Maze Runner vibes towards the end of it. And I was just like, oh, yes. Also, maybe a little bit of like Harry Potter, the Goblet of Fire towards the end. Because like the whole maze, it was like, I think I've seen this before maybe just a little bit it gave me everything I wanted things that I didn't even know that I needed were in that book and it made me so happy and okay maybe a little bit of like six of crows vibes maybe a little bit of fourth wing vibes were also in there maybe okay just hear me out the summer I turned pretty because you know like the two princes like you know brothers and I couldn't tell if there was like a love triangle forming I was like she's into Kai but I think Kit's into her, so like what's happening? And like she was being friendly with him, but like obviously we all know she was trying to get information, okay? But I'm like, is there something going on? But like obviously he did like her because in the epilogue he was like, I feel betrayed for someone that I trusted, someone that I wanted. And I'm like, so I wasn't making that up in my brain. It was true. But like, no, she's supposed to be with Kai. Uh, and that's like a whole other thing. Oh my gosh, crazy, crazy. Also, I originally thought that maybe it was like moving too fast because I was like, oh, when they first met, they were already like flirty flirty with each other, you know? But I was like, you know what? No, I think it works. I think it's fine because I don't really like love when like the couple like likes each other right off the bat, but they thought they never going to see each other again. So like they were like, I'll be flirty flirty. It's fine. Obviously, I knew that they were going to see each other again, but they didn't at the time. So like it was fine. <laughs> And also, I have nothing to compare this book to. I know a lot of people were like, oh, it's giving like Red Queen vibes. Never read Red Queen. I have absolutely no clue. I don't know. This wasn't like my first introduction to a book like this, but one where it like ends in betrayal like that at the ending. Yeah, kind of crazy. 
this book has just become my new obsession and I've been stalking Lauren Roberts and her page and looking at all the fan art. Oh my gosh. Okay, when you finish like a book, like looking at the fan art is such a trophy at the end because you're like, okay, let's see. Let's see if all of our minds put it together and let me try to find the best one that matches what I pictured in my brain. And you know what? Some of the fan art, it's not hidden. I've seen a couple and I'm like, okay, I can kind of see it, but just I don't think anyone can get Kai right. <laughs> I just don't know if anyone's doing them justice. Also, I have no clue when this book came out. I thought it came out in like December of last year, but then I see TikToks of people reading it from like November of last year, and I'm like, oh, I don't know. I thought it was late to the powerless train, and I was like, it's okay. Don't worry, I'm gonna read the book that comes out this month, which it doesn't, because I'm July, okay? I was like, yeah, I'm like one of the last people to be reading it. I don't think so. I'm seeing a lot of hype of it now, and I'm like, oh, when did it come out too? So. I don't know, I feel like I'm like right in like the curve when I should be reading it. Dude, I don't know, but I'm glad I did. Dude, but the trials, the first trial though, let's get into that. Let's let's unpack the first trial because I didn't know what to expect or like what was actually gonna go down. I was just like, oh, okay. So they're literally in PJs <laughs> having to survive for like a week in the forest. So I was like, okay, awesome, cool. Don't know how that's gonna pan out. I was also really scared because I was like, she doesn't have any powers. So like. I mean, guess she can fight, but I'm like, how's that gonna go down, you know? But it's okay because they found each other. They found each other. The way he saved her life. You're kidding. That was so good. I was literally giggling the whole time. I was like, is she gonna die? But then he was like, oh, no. And I was like, mm. actually, no, this whole book had me kicking, giggling, screaming, kicking my feet up, like the whole book, the whole time. Anytime they had a conversation, I think it was just the tension was so good. And like the angst. Anytime they talked, I was like a little schoolgirl just like laughing and giggling. Like I could not help myself. And you know a book is good when you start doing that. Like this book, five stars because of that, okay? But like the first trial, I was like, okay, this is giving Hunger Games. Hunger Games. She even had a bow and arrow, okay? And then at first I was like, because when she like walked over to Kai and she was like literally about to die and he was like, oh my gosh, what do I do? What do I do? He found like a first aid kit or something like that. And I was like, was that a parachute? Did someone give him a parachute? But no, it was like something that Braxton like dropped and he was just like, ding, let's go. And it was like an elixir, so it was different, but like also kind of the same because in Hunger Games, it's like that salve or paste or whatever that they use to like help PETA, which is like low key the same. I don't know, but I was like, oh, Hunger Games, Hunger Games. And then also when they're training, oh my gosh, when they're training, Blair throws or like uses her powers and she throws a dagger at Peyton. Guess what? It nicks her ear and she's bleeding from her ear. Does that sound familiar? Tris from Divergent, which is like a crucial moment. Oh, oh my gosh, I know it was different because it wasn't like the male lead that did it, but also I was just like, ooh, that's crazy. All of these things that are like plucked from other books, I can look past that because honestly, it had all my favorite parts of all of those just put together in one book and I was just, so happy and it was like a different spin because the ending is like different the betrayal okay the magic even though she doesn't have magic it's like you're still living in that realm i don't know i i ate it up as you can tell i i, I loved it <laughs> and the balls don't even get me started on the balls <gasps> those were insane i was like no kid asked her and i was like they're never gonna get a chance to hang out wrong i was so wrong some of their best moments were literally at the ball like the attack that happened with the rebellion in the middle of the ball and he was like trying to save her and then the next one with like the willow tree and they were like hanging out over there i was like mm, so good so good i don't know but just lauren roberts knows how to write just angsty tension and she does it so well i was just eating it up look i finished this like two nights ago like 2 a.m and oh, that ending, I knew it was gonna happen. I, I knew it was gonna happen, but it still got me. It still hurt. And the parallels, the parallels in what he was saying. He was like, oh, hey, what have you done to me? And then at the very end, he was like, what have you done to me? And he's like, I'm gonna give you a running head start. Go, because when I find you, I'll have the courage to kill you. I'm gonna take this knife, I'm gonna stab you in the back like you stabbed me in the back. You are kidding me. Now that right there, I was like, no, he did not just say that. He did not just say that. She's all bruised and battered and bloody because your dad just tried to kill her. In the back of my mind the whole time, I was like, I bet you his first kill was probably her dad. The king never did stuff like that. And she was like, oh yeah, the king, I remember it like vividly. And I was like, okay, so maybe the king really did kill her dad. I don't know. But then in my mind, I was like, oh, 
the king like trained him as a child so he probably killed in my mind that was a conspiracy theory but i was like he probably killed her dad and when it turned out to be true, I was like, mm, I did not want that to happen, but I like had a feeling. I had a, such a strong feeling. But also, at the very end too, there was like that site who saw the whole thing, and I was like, okay, I hope Gurley recorded the whole entire thing where the king literally confessed to just like lying to all of his people, you know, and not just the murder that happened. So I hope that that gets mentioned in the next book because I'm like, the people need to know, Kit needs to know, there was a reason behind the murder and it wasn't just like full-on betrayal. I mean, okay, it was full-on betrayal, but like, dude, I don't know. I don't know how to paint that to make it look good. But yeah, dude, I can honestly just go on and on about this book. After I read a good book, I'm just like, I need to tell somebody about it and I just end up telling my mom and she's like, cool, you had a fun time. And I'm like, no, I need to tell somebody. I don't have anyone to tell about my books, like literally nobody. I need to tell a living soul, someone who might care, someone who might understand just a little bit. This book has just become my new recent obsession and like, that's okay. By the way, this is my chair. It's very squeaky. It's like a turny one, a spinny chair. Don't look at the back of my head. I don't know what it looks like with my hair. <laughs> but yeah, if it's noisy, that's what's going on. Oh my gosh, I should not have put that in. Every time I put this product in, I think maybe I either put too much or I should put it in before I do my concealer, but it kind of like smears. Maybe it's because I shouldn't be brushing it with a spoolie. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's not dry yet. That could also be something too. I don't know. Also, when I don't know why, but whenever I film it from my window, it's like so blindingly bright. So if I look really, really, really pale, that could be why. Maybe I am also just pale. <laughs> okay, let me look back in the book because I'm like, what else am I forgetting? What else am I missing? I don't know, just the way that they always had each other's backs was like so good. And okay, I don't like a damsel in distress, but like I do at the same time. Like, okay, she's powerful. We get it. Even though she says she's powerless, she's powerful. We know she can handle herself. But I do like when he comes to her defense and saves her, okay? I'm not saying that I'm ruling for a damsel in distress all the time, but when it's called for, it's good when it's called for it is good okay because like also she couldn't save herself in every scenario like when they first met obviously she saved his life and then when they got to the trials he didn't have to they were like kind of flirty flirty but like they hadn't like established anything and he was just like i care for her so he like obviously saved her life didn't want her to die because of what ace did and then he was like who did this to you come on come on and then again, I forgot who it was, but in the first trials afterwards, I forgot her name. She died though. <laughs> Kai killed her and then he buried her body. So sweet. Okay, <laughs> that's kind of like bare minimum though. And you shouldn't be killing each other. But like in the context of this, it's so sweet because he didn't have to do that. I haven't done my makeup in front of like a mirror in front of my window in like so long. And now I'm like, my makeup doesn't look that good. But you know what? It's gonna have to be. I don't know guys, dare I say, but no, actually I'm, I'm going to say. Kai, he's on my list of book boyfriends. He's moving on up in the ranks. Um, I think that's also just because my obsession right now, but like he's definitely, he's definitely up there on the list. Yeah. And I know that like this is probably like a common thing though, but like the fact that like he's the enforcer and he kills ordinaries and she's an ordinary. He was like, oh my gosh, we're flirting. Like we both like each other. She needs to just like give in to this and like do whatever she wants because they both never got a chance to do what they wanted as kids. And now they're like, this is for us. But like he doesn't know that she's scared because of their connection. But also because if he knew the truth, he would kill her. But like he wouldn't kill her. You know, I don't, that's what made it so good. Cause it was like such this like give and take of push and pull. I was like, uh just like fighting with myself and being like oh my gosh what are they gonna do but also i hadn't read a book with something like this type of vibe or trope kind of where it's like i don't know i don't know how to explain it but so for me it was very like refreshing and new but like obviously maybe i just haven't read that many fantasy books out there but for me since i read this one first and this is what i'm reading this is i was eating it up it was great oh my gosh and i totally forgot in the way that <gasps> because he was giving her dance lessons because she was gonna go to the ball with kit and i was like he took her up to his room his room and they had dance lessons at like midnight and then in the first trials they were dancing underneath the stars it was so cute and i was like oh, they're catching all this on camera too i was like are they gonna have like a star cross lovers moment like hunger games i was like are they gonna get that but i was like okay no they're not like the general public is not seeing what we see obviously and then i was also like 
this is so Hunger Games, but that girl's, what's her name? Tila with the teal hair being the interviewer. I was like, she is Caesar Flickerman from the Hunger Games and I wanna hear that cackle girl. Give me that laugh, I wanna hear it. We never got it though. The way that the king put Adina in the middle as like the criminal, now that was criminal. Why on earth did you do that? Like, I know why you did it, but like, that was terrible. And Blair, I hope she gets her revenge on Blair in the next one. Now Blair's such a coward because she wasn't even in that fight when like the bull and like the rebellion and all that went down. She was gone. I was like, this is her moment. She can kill her right now. Vanished. I was like, mm, okay, coward much. The next time she sees her, she needs to be like, I'm about to beat this bitch up because I'm like, she needs to die. She literally killed your BFF. Her only family, really. Girlie's all alone now too. But yeah, this book was just so good. So happy that I finally read it. Like it'd been sitting on my shelf for like, I want to say like a month because I was reading, what was I reading before that? I don't even remember. Oh, I was reading um, When in Rome and Practice Makes Perfect and I was like, I'm gonna read Powerless next. I waited like a month to read it. I should have read that first, but you know what? I'm kind of glad because then I would be waiting like, like four months for the next book to come out. So I'm kind of glad that worked out. Maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> And then like, okay, I like Peyton and Kit's like friendship. I was like, that's good. And she's gonna teach the future king some lessons and like what he needs to fix about his kingdom. But the way that she like completely betrayed him, I was like, girl, this is not gonna end well. This is not gonna end well because she went to those like rebellion meetings and I was like, okay, your dad, whatever. You know, he was like the head of the rebellion. Okay, you know, that would've been great to figure out sooner, but it's fine. She stole his keys and everything. I was like, ooh. Mm, you really did just use him. That was Kai and I think you used him too because you, their relationship was a lot different than her and Kit's. I don't even know. And then when we get to the epilogue, I was like, Kit's POV? That's not good. That is not good. And he was like, bring me Peyton Gray Enforcer. I was like, okay, we've lost it. We've lost you. Now you've turned into your dad. And he sits in the dad's leather chair. I was like, is that the leather chair that was her dad's? because she always mentioned in her home, her dad like in his study had a leather chair and that's where he sat. And I was like, oh, is that the same leather chair? I might be reading into things too much, but I'm like, oh no. And then the sneak peek of the next book, like the first chapter. Oh my gosh. The way Kai is just talking to himself in her house and she's in the chimney, just like how the book started. Crazy. And now everything is so different because now the princes are like in their actual roles. Like Kai's actually the enforcer and Kit's actually the king no that's crazy like what are you gonna do with all this power dude are you gonna follow in your father's footsteps i'm thinking he might because now he's just pissed but i think there's still hope for kai because he like saw what was going down and you can't just turn off your feelings just like that can you i hope not no part of me thinks that they're gonna work things out they're gonna look past this because he didn't even really like his dad anyway Kit's relationship with the king was different than Kai's relationship with the king because obviously they were both trained for different things. Like all the torture that the king did to Kai. Okay, is that forgivable? Yes, it was his dad, but like he always saw him as the king and not like as a father and like not like a good warming father figure. So like, would he be that pissed that his dad died? And like you guys are even now, she killed your dad and you killed her dad. Can we get over this little hurdle? I hope so. <laughs> Oh no, I think I messed up the wing. Oh no. These wings, not my best work. I will say that. Now it's time for mascara and I've really been enjoying putting a colored mascara on my bottom lashes. Normally I do blue, but you know, for the sake of this video, let's just do some purple on the bottom lashes. <laughs> if that doesn't show me being a little bit obsessed, then I don't know what is. You know what I just remembered? when they were in the second trial and she was gonna kill Ace and I was like, you know what girl, I've been waiting for this moment. Go ahead and do it. Kill him, please. And then she was like, no, 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 no. Kai's watching. She's like, I'm gonna give this to him. Like she like got him on the floor, literally about to kill him. And then she was like, he go. And then it's literally like capture the flag and divergent and she goes and captures the flag, obviously. Cause like the point was one person was supposed to get it after their like team bonding exercise of like climbing up a mountainside. Okay, but and they did that, both sides came back together. They came back in the center, bloodbath. And yeah, I'm so happy that Kai killed Ace because it was also for Peyton, but also for Jax because he literally almost killed Jax with his like illusions, thinking he was killing Ace. Glad he finally killed him. It was about time. And then also reminds me, 
so happy when she actually killed the king i was like you know what girl you get your revenge he was talking so much trash and i knew that in the chapter before that kai was like i'm running to the outskirts of the bowl i'm about to get outside and i was like that's where they are fighting and i'm like is he gonna when is he gonna pop out is he gonna like stop the king from killing her because he like carved an o into her heart for like ordinary you know and i'm like where's kai is he gonna run through and be like hey what's going on and he's gonna fight his father that did not happen i guess it just set up the ending for like a better betrayal and i was like you know what yeah <laughs> but yeah and then there was also the nightmare where she like went over to his room and they like ah, they like slept together not slept together but they like slept with each other and that was just so cute he was just like staring at her and then he brought her breakfast in bed but then like ugh, then they started avoiding each other after that and i was like no but it was just so cute there's so many cute moments like the tension in here and the angst and just like the slow burn was so good some people can't handle that like a slow burn or whatever and maybe they thought it was too slow but I loved it. I thought it was just the right amount of slowness and like the tension and the flirting and... Okay, I just got dressed, but I have to leave for class in like a little bit. So yeah, that was pretty much powerless. I just needed to get my feelings out and talk about it because this book was just so good. I feel like I've expressed that a lot, but this is basically me just gushing about how much I love powerless and I can't wait for the next book to come out. It's in July, but I will be waiting and I will be reading it. And I'm also gonna pick up the novella, Powerful, and I will be reading that one as well. I need something for the like powerless hangover that I have right now. So I'm gonna be buying that and I will be reading it. But I don't know, just something about this book like scratched an itch in my brain and it was just so good to me. Some people have different opinions, but for me, this was it. I really enjoyed it. Right now, this is my new hyperfixation. This is my new obsession book. Like, yeah, I'm gonna be thinking about this and the ending just, for a while. I'm gonna be thinking about it until July basically. But yeah, I hope you guys just enjoyed this quick get ready with me. It was just so that I could talk about the book and I could gush about it because I have nobody else to talk about books with. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, yeah. Bye.